for joining us for an interview with Brian Webb and Patrick Martinson, co-founders of ClearPath Robotics, a company founded in Waterloo. So how did you come up with this idea for ClearPath Robotics? ClearPath was started out of um, a fourth year project that is a requirement for the Mechatronics program. It's kind of your capstone project. And all four of us chose to do a project on landmine detection robots uh, through the robotics team at that time. And as we were working on it for a while, we started to think that there was the possibility that this could actually be marketable as a, a full-time business. And I think at the same time, we got the idea that we really liked working with each other and didn't want to just go into the mainstream and get you know, a regular old job. And the opportunity to do both came up through starting the company, and that was where the roots first came in. Uh, after some time, we sort of had to reevaluate the, the approach that we were taking to that and what was within our means at the time, but that was where the idea came from. What's Clear Path Robotics about? Our robots are used primarily for research applications right now. So there is still a lot, there's going to be huge growth in the area of robotic applications across a lot of different industries. Uh, primarily what we're looking at are outdoor uses of different robots. So mining, forestry, uh, just general surveying, uh, as well as all the uses that they're already finding for in you know, the defense organizations. Uh, so there's going to be huge strides made in those areas in the coming five to ten years. However, there is a lot of researchers out there who want to test some of these applications and start to prototype things who just don't have a robust set of hardware to work with. And we found that a lot of them, these researchers have sunk tons of their time into trying to develop their own, uh, and it, it's delaying their research, and so it's almost counterproductive for them to do that. So we have developed several very robust hardware platforms that can be used and are very flexible to adapt to any kind of research that these uh, different organizations want to use. So we primarily are working with universities right now, and are planning to work with some more government and industrial organizations. And you have three different robots. Yes. Can you describe them? Sure. We have the Husky, which is primarily a research platform. Uh, it's a six-field robot that's designed for outdoor research. Uh, we have the Chameleon, which is a educational robot. It's a modular robot that uh, the pieces can be worked with separate, uh, independently, and then the students can learn from each piece separately. And we also have the Kingfisher, which is a, a boat, so it's a surface vehicle. Okay, and how did you decide to go with those type of designs? With some of the stuff, there's actually requests directly from our customers. Uh, we, as you'll hear with a lot of companies, we try to be very customer focused. Uh, in this case, that meant not starting out with all of these ideas of different products. Uh, with both the Kingfisher and the Chameleon, these were direct requests from our customers for a one-time contract, which then we realized with uh, some small modifications to what their original uh, vision was, these could be used in a much more flexible way and get interest from a lot of other parties. What about software for your robots? Do you provide some or do clients have to have their own? So we provide a protocol that the clients can communicate with our robots. Um, so they would write their own navigation software, their own path planning software, uh, basically their own high level intelligence to the vehicle. Uh, and then they would tell the vehicle what to do, which direction to move in and how fast. And so we provide basically up until that line where they're talking and saying, this is exactly what I want the vehicle to do. Okay, so Clear Path Robotics were incor was incorporated in 2009. It's a very yeah. new company. Yes. Um, and what, what's the size now of your company? We've got 11 people working with us, um, four co-op students, four co-founders, and three full-times. And how does that work to have four co-founders? You must have different tensions, different directions, or can you collaborate easily? A bit of both, and both are needed at different times within the company. What was very easy from the outset was that we all had our different focuses from within the UW robotics team. I focused on the mechanical design, Brian on the electrical, and the other two focused on software and sort of the business development side. So it was a very natural progression to just move into those roles in the company. Uh, but as we're growing now, we find that there are all kinds of different roles that don't fit into those four groups. 
and we're sort of starting to stretch beyond that and the newer people are coming and filling in the roles that we originally started with and we have to move into all kinds of different operations. So how do you do that? Like how do you recruit new people for your company? What characteristics are you looking for? Well, the two of the first full-time hires that we had were actually friends of ours from the mechatronics program. So they were people we knew already and were comfortable working with. Uh, the third was someone we met through the Accelerator Center. Um, and basically what we were looking for is someone who, a dynamic uh, person who has experience and can bring something to the table that, that we don't have already. Yeah, he'd been involved in a much earlier startup in the water area called NavTech. And so he'd gone from the startup stage that we're currently in all the way to them being a much larger business. So he's had a lot of experience and has been through all the sort of progressions that we're going to go through in the next few years. Okay. So once you had an idea, once you had the four co-founders, um, how did you go about finding funding? Well, it was mostly done through the network at the Accelerator Center. Matt is, is the CEO of Clear Path Robotics and he is naturally talented in finding people and connecting with other people. So I don't think it was really much of a, I don't think it was really hard for him to find the right people and start talking to them and, and uh, see if there are other people interested. Okay. I think it's more of a hobby for him, just yeah. collecting <laughs> business cards everywhere he goes. So, so networking is very important. Yeah. yeah. And it seems like your team is, definitely has many varied talents. And is that important for a startup? Yeah, well, I mean, you mentioned that it can be a little bit tricky if there's four people with four differing opinions uh, uh, being co-founders of a business. But it also has very a lot of advantages, too, um, because everybody having different opinions leads to much better brainstorming and collaboration. So because there's four different people, there's four different people with better talents and, and different perspectives. So, and I think this wouldn't work nearly as well if you didn't have a group of people who all are very comfortable having sometimes fairly drawn out discussions and dialogues about this stuff. Because when you have these different opinions, you can, if you're on a quick timeline to make a decision or you're trying to wrap up a meeting, uh, it can be very difficult to get a resolution that everybody agrees with. But if you have people who are willing to talk it out and sort of find out where the other group has formed their opinions from, and get to some of the underlying causes that way, it, Benefits of growing the group. How important is it uh, to go to trade shows when you're still in the startup phase or when you have hardware, you have something to demonstrate and people don't know about you? Mm -hmm. And it's for us, I, I found it's incredibly important to get get our name out there and start talking with people in the industry. Otherwise, we wouldn't have the opportunity to talk to people who have been there and done that in the robotics industry and, and know what what is on the cutting edge of the market right now. Sometimes people have great ideas, um, but yet after trying to get them on the market for a long time, it doesn't really work uh, because sometimes the market is just not ready for a certain idea. So when do you know when to stop, when to abandon something? Well, that's a very difficult uh, question to answer and it kind of is made more so by some of the traits that Brian was talking about that I definitely agree with uh, in terms of just determination and tenacity to not listen to people when they tell you no. Uh, but nonetheless, there are definitely situations where you do have to just uh, evaluate an idea and determine that it's just, the market's not right for it right now. And we had a similar situation to that with our first idea for the autonomous timeline detection systems, mm -hmm. where it was as much the market wasn't ready for it as we would not have the means to continue developing the idea until it was ready. So that was something that we had to look at, just uh, best case scenarios of what it would take for us to develop this, how long we could continue going without revenue, and how long the market would bear us, and what sort of uh, profits that we could get out of that on what kind of timeline. And through looking at all that and just having the bare numbers in front of us, we finally were able to convince ourselves. And it wasn't a a gentle process. It took a few different conversations to come to that conclusion for all four of us. Uh, but when you have the bare numbers in front of you, it makes it a little more difficult to uh, to argue with and kind of have to come around eventually. Do you like running a startup? Absolutely. And what about it? Do you like? Just the breadth of different experiences that you're getting every day in terms of new things that you have to learn about, uh, different challenges that 
you encounter that you would never find in a small organization where you're just playing such a small part and just being able to see all aspects of things and being able to make some of those decisions about and drive things like the culture and the direction that we're going to be pursuing with our different markets and things like that um, has just been uh, an amazing experience. Okay, what are the three characteristics that an entrepreneur should have? Definitely determination and confidence. So, determination means that you have come up with this idea and you understand that this idea has potential. Um, and you won't let people tell you, I mean, there you can learn from other people's advice, but the core idea is something that you believe strongly in and you're determined to make that work. And confidence is you're not afraid to approach people with this idea and be rejected uh, repeatedly, because that, that happens when you're running a startup. And uh, just the ability to have fun in very stressful environments because startups are, you're constantly going to be under uh, you know, crushing amounts of stress, but you have to be able to you know, push through it and say, this is what I want to do and I'm still having fun doing it. And do you have some tips of how to deal with stress? Um, definitely get some hobbies that you enjoy doing outside of work. And get them or keep them. Keep them. <laughs> if you don't have them already, get them. Okay. Um, and so th that definitely helps to relieve the stress. And no matter, it, it also helps to understand that no matter what pressures you have at work, this there's still going to be the world's still going to be there tomorrow, and you know it's, it's not the end of the world. So you can you can go out and relax for a couple hours and come back or. You know, just just put it off till tomorrow if you're, you're too stressed. And at the same time, I think you have to do whatever you can to have an environment at work where you're still having fun. Yeah. Um, so you can't let the stress of the situation get to you and affect your relationship with your other co-founders or any of the other co-workers at the business. And if anything like that starts to happen, you have to do whatever you can to address the problems early on because it's only going to get worse in a very stressful environment. So you have to be very preemptive with that and just do whatever you can to make the environment as fun as you can despite all the stresses that are coming at you. Are you fans of science fiction? No. Um, you are? Yeah, I, I was a Star Wars nerd when I was a kid. <laughs> you are not. not. Not so much, no. No? no. How, so, how can you build robots and not be? I don't know. I, I never really read too much science fiction. Uh, Patrick, what was your childhood dream? My childhood dream was to be a video game designer, actually. Okay. And over the years, that was something that I'd always wanted to do. Uh, but when it came time to around middle of high school, there was just sort of, it wasn't even a decision on my part. It was just kind of, uh, I took it as a given that I was really good at math. I like playing with Lego, so why not try being an engineer? What about you, Brian? My childhood dream wasn't really work-related. I, I guess I really wanted to travel the world. Which and just, is okay for a child. Yes, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, I just wanted to travel the world and see a bunch of different places and different cultures and that sort of thing. Thank you so much, Brian and Patrick. It was wonderful having you. Um, thank you for telling us more about Clear Path Robotics. Absolutely. Thanks a lot, Brian.